Lord at all times. Mm. His grace shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. We want to see Jesus lifted. I said, if I be lifted up from the earth, yes. I will draw all men into myself. Amen. is our God, the splendor of the King, His clothing majesty, how great, how great is our God.
from the King James Version and we're reading from Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. eight. Praise the Lord. And if I can ask if you're able to stand, please you please stand for the reading of God's word. It says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, Amen. that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to God, have dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 His word is already blessed, but we're going to honor them this Amen. morning by saying, Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mandy. And right now I have great pleasure and I'm presenting the speaker for today who is no other than our Bishop Bruce, um, Bishop Bruce Congregation, Congregation Bishop Bruce. Praise the Lord. He's our God, sing with me how praise is our Let's worship the Lord. Come, let's worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you come to worship today? How many of you come to worship today? Amen. We might be down in numbers. Many people are on holiday. Amen. Some got the the, um, the timing wrong, and in other words, somebody else was supposed to be speaking today. Um, but um, God knows everything. Yes, He does. Amen. And so, if I was to give a word today, I'm going to give it on a transformed mind. Turn to your neighbour and say a transformed mind. Transformed mind. Transformed mind. You see, one of the things we have to understand is how our mind works. 
The Bible says, so a man thinketh, so he is, is he. Um, one of the things that you'll find that when um, boxers are about to fight somebody, you will notice there's a lot of trash talking. And there is a reason why there is a lot of trash talking, because they're trying to get into your mind. And they know, each boxer knows that if I can get into your mind, I can place fear in your mind. And when there is fear in your mind, then it will affect the way that you perform. And so one of the things we have to understand that the mind is a very important part of our makeup and our mind will determine how we react to certain things. <laughs> I was the kind of person who understood this from a young age. And so even sometimes when I, because I used to fight a lot when I was young, and even sometimes when I got hit really hard, I had it in my mind that if I could get back up and keep on throwing punches, then I would affect the other person's mind because he would think that I wasn't hurt. And so it, a lot of it was psychological taking place in the mind. And so even though I got knocked down, I got back up because it was a battle of the minds. And as long as I knew that I was fit enough, I knew that if I can cause doubt in somebody else's mind, then amen, they would start to not um, um, perform in the way that they perform because now there is doubt in your mind. And so the devil always tries to get into our mind. If we look back at Adam and Eve, amen, the devil got into Eve's mind by saying, God don't want you to become wise like him. And so it was a psychological thing to get in the mind. If you can tell somebody that, oh, this person uh, is not really after your best, best interest, you begin to think to yourself, well, no, I'm not listening to that person because that person uh, is not after my best interest. So the devil tries to con you. And so it's important that we understand the importance of the mind. Because the mind is what causes us to, to do the things that we do. Uh, um, your, the right mindset will cause you to get up when you fall. If you have the, the wrong mindset, then when you fall, you'll lay down. Um, and so a lot of it is in the mind. And we live in a world today where people, uh, there are so many things competing to, to attract our mind, to, to, to influence our mind. We are well aware of this movement, um, which they call woke, where they, they tell you all these kind of things, and it's all designed to influence your mind. And you will notice why they target children in schools, amen, at, at a young age, and tell, you, tell a boy that he can just come into school and tell the teacher that he's a girl. The reason why they're targeting young children because they know that their minds are pure, and it's easy to corrupt a pure mind. And so they know that a mind that has been trained, a mind that they, as they experience things is not so easy to change. But a mind that is young is flexible. A mind that is young can be bent to how you want it. And so a lot of what the, the society is doing, they will target the young. And that's what we find in our society today. We find a lot of crimes and most of the crimes that are committed is by young people. Because the devil can get into their minds. And so uh, sometimes they tell you that, oh, you shouldn't discipline your kids and you should do this and you should do that. Because they know that when the kids uh, come up and they're not under any kind of control, amen, the devil can control their minds. Mm -hmm. And so we teach the children not to have any discipline, but you notice that the ones who, who are, are what you call middle class and stuff, they send their kids to schools where there's strong discipline. But in the public schools, they say, oh, you don't need to discipline the kids, you don't need to do that because they don't want your child to be successful. 
Because one of the things that I, I talked about in, in, in the box, and the reason why they say certain things is because they know that when you have a coach and a trainer, he's going to work out a game plan of how you're going to tackle this particular individual. And so the other opponent don't want you to focus on the game plan. He wants you to act in, a, in an undisciplined, irrational way so that you, you don't stick to your game plan and you throw lots of punches when you shouldn't do and leave yourself open to be caught. And so what they do is try to get into your head to, and they say all kinds of things about your mother and things that they shouldn't say that they know will really rile you up because they're trying to get into your mind. They're trying to mess up your mind. Don't you notice after the fight how they come and they, they want to hug you and stuff and sometimes they have a fight they want to, because of all the things that they said and they say, oh, I didn't mean it, I was just saying that because I wanted to get the edge. And so there are certain people who want to get the edge over you and they will say anything Thing that they can say just to try to get into your mind so it's important the Bible says that we ought to guard our minds yes. 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 what you think about will affect your mind and affect what you do and so you have to think good things. You have to think positive things. I remember when I was taking my exams, I failed some of them and I said, you know something, I know that I can pass it and it's just a hiccup and I'm going back. I had to tell my mind, but if I let my mind, some people tell me, why don't you just give up? You, you, it's not meant for you and all this kind of stuff. But I had to tell my mind that I am not going to allow those negative thoughts to come. I am more than a conqueror. Amen. You see, the thing is, I had a vision that I had passed. And so I was so confident that when I went up, I felt, I think, by the past, I, I must have missed it by about two. By two months, and I thought to myself, you know something, just two months, they could have just given me that. Because the thing is, with the, with the, with the subjects that were, were, were mathematical, yeah, with the subjects that were mathematical, I did well because they, they, they haven't got much scope to, to use discretion. But it was in the essay type um, things where I struggled because it was discretionary based on what you put. There, there was a certain amount of discretion. So I said, well, they could have used their discretion. Because when it was black and white, they had to give me the marks. It was either, because maths was the kind of thing, you're either going to score well or you score really badly. <laughs> you said you knew it or you didn't know it. But in the in the, the, the subjective ones where you had to give certain opinions and certain things, it was much more difficult because it's subjective. And so sometimes when you're close, you thought to themselves, gosh, they surely could have just given you those extra marks. Because it was the subjective ones that I, I struggled on because it, a lot of it is on opinion. You know, they might ask you to write a report of how you turn this company around. A lot of it's subjective. A lot of people will have a different view of how it should be done. And so it's subjective. Just like how when they box in a box, watching a boxing match, some judges come up with different scores to the other, yet they all score the same thing. And so it's subjective. And so when you have these subjective things, it depends what the person was thinking at the time. And you know you might you might get one uh, examiner who think like this and mark negative, and you might go back another time and a different examiner uh, judge it differently. A bit like in football, where sometimes there's certain decisions, and you say, "Well, how comes the referee did that and last week they did something different?" Mm. Because a certain amount of it is subjective. And so when you realize that it's subjective, you say, you know something, I might not have got favor this time, but next time I'm going again because I'm going to get favor. So when you have the right mindset, you say, I'm going to shake myself off and I'm going to go again. One of the things that we face in this world today is that people have become egocentric. What do I mean by that? They put the interests of oneself and concern for one's welfare or advantage at the expense or disregard of others. In other words, when we put our own self-interest first at the disregard of others. It, I've read in the news and seen on, 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 on the TV and, and the media how women having to fight for their personal spaces because now all these trans women amen can now in, in, in go into their space and so they have they have to fight for it and so now we have a situation where these trans women are just thinking about themselves but they don't care about the real natural born women that they want to have spaces where it's just them 
We have situations where uh, uh, men are, are saying they're women and want to go in women only spaces, amen, and they want to have their right. Again, this is egocentrism whereby they're just thinking about themselves at the expense of other people. This is the world that we are living in. And that's why Romans tells us, it says, I beseech you therefore, burdened by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not let the world's system uh, uh, cause you to conform or submit to it, because they say so. I was at a, a, a faith meeting the other day with the council and other faith groups and I, I said to them, I said, listen, we are not going to conform to your system. I goes, you have people there who are making up these rules and saying that a five-year-old boy can, can change to a girl and all this kind of stuff. I goes, we are not conforming to it. Who put those people who are making those rules in authority? What makes them authority? I goes, actually, they represent less than probably 1% of the population. Who gives them authority? What, what authority are they using to put these things out and to be pushing it into the schools? I spoke out and a number of the Imams that were there at that meeting, they said to me, they applauded me and said, well done, well done for speaking out. We have to stand up and be counted. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Don't just accept it because they push it out there and tell you that's what you have to accept. No, we don't have to accept it. They're telling you that these people can't help it. Let me tell you something. Every single thing that you do is through your mind. And so the Bible says, so when a, a, a boy feels like he's a girl, he, he ain't no girl. What the Bible says, it's your mind that needs to be renewed. It's your mind that telling you that. It's your mind. Because your mind controls your body. So the thing that is wrong is not your body that's it. You're not in the wrong body. It's your mind needs to be renewed. And that's why it says, uh, uh, and do not be conformed to it, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. If I have a desire to do certain things, it's my mind that has to change. The Apostle Paul said, listen, when I would do good, evil is present before me. And the things I find myself, uh, the things that I don't want to do is the things that I find myself doing. And he said, there's a war in God. And what he's trying to say, I am not going to allow this bad mindset to control me. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to think positive things. I'm going to renew my mind. I'm going to change the way that I think. But what people are now doing is going according to how they feel. I have been married for 37 years. I have never cheated on my wife. Now, do you not think that there has been times when there might be temptations and all this kind of stuff, but you have to say in your mind, regardless of how you feel or whoever is tempting you, you have to speak to your mind and say, no, I am not going to do that. And so you have to speak to the mind, otherwise if I went uh, according to how I feel, and you know, I'm just going to do it because I feel like going like this, and I feel like doing this. I worked in a job where there was a female director, quite a few years older than me. She came on to me and was telling me, you know, she could get me up the ladder if I just go home with her. <laughs> but I had to make her know that no, I'm a child of God. I will not do that. Some people would have taken the shortcut and got up the ladder. But I said no. <laughs> she said to me, nobody would have to know about it. But I said no. Because God still sees it. And so what I'm trying to say, there are some people who get to a certain position, they didn't get there by merit. They got there by doing other things. And so what I'm trying to say, when temptation comes, you have to say to your mind, get, get behind me, Satan. And you have to speak to yourself. Sometimes you have to talk to yourself. Don't think that people are not tempted. Even Jesus himself got tempted in the, in the garden by the devil. The devil will tempt every single one of us. Regardless of the position that you hold, the devil will tempt you. Yes. Yes. Every one of us will have our demons that we are fighting, and so we got to fight. We can't just give in to the demon and say, "Oh, that's the way I feel, so I'm going to be this." 
if you're a young boy and you feel like you want to be a girl because you grew up with your mother, maybe there's not a father figure, you need to tell yourself, I am a boy. And any time you get this in, because the Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is he. So you have to control your thinking. Control what you think about. The Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And so you're going to make sure what you think, what you think. Be careful of people who are putting things into your mind. Because when they put things into your mind, you'll think about it. And they'll be subtle like the devil and say, oh, it doesn't matter. You could climb up quick, you know. <laughs> You've got financial difficulties, that could be wiped out. Sometimes the devil knows what you're suffering thing, and he has every trick to say, well, you know something, if you look at it this way, you know, some of your financial problems could be solved. Because guess what? In my department, uh, I run my department, I'm the director, you know, so I can give you a position high up where you got more money. So your money worries could be taken care of. And sometimes when you're struggling and, and you're on that little money, sometimes the temptation could be there. I remember when I was trying to get the planning permission for the church to build it. Somebody told me, I know a counsellor in, in the council. And uh, if you grease his palm, he, he can get things done for you. That's how we get things done. And I said, no, I'm not going to be greasing nobody's palm. Because when you get caught and found out, everything comes crashing down. So I said, no, I'm not greasing somebody's palm. If that's the way you got there, I'm not going that route. Because he says, the person can't be seen to think, but I'm the middle man and you pay me. And then I, I get it to him, but he can't be seen to be, to be things. So you have to go through the middle man. And so you have some people in certain positions who are taking bribes and so they're in those positions and they're abusing their position because they're taking bribes to make certain decisions and so if you're the kind of person who want to take a shortcut you can take a shortcut but guess what one day the chickens are going to come home to roost so a man thinketh so is he what I want to say to you is you need to control your thinking. Tell your mind what it ought to think. Tell your mind what the Bible says. And so even if you're fine, you're doing something, because let me tell you something, your desires will come from what you're thinking. If you're thinking of something and you're looking at something and you're thinking, guess what? All of a sudden you start creating a desire because you're, look, you're looking at it. Sometimes I've gone out to town and said, I'm just going for a walk. Never intended to buy nothing. And then you look in the window of a shop and you see something. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> you see a chocolate or you see something and you thought to yourself, I was watching my dad. But you pass by the window. And when you look at the chocolate, uh, your mind telling you that chocolate got your name on it. And so all of a sudden, you, 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 you start to, 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 to eat it. It's like if, if my wife bought certain things and put it in the cupboard. When I'm feeling peckish at night and I open the cupboard and I see it. Because it's there, the temptation is there. And unless you have a strong mind to say, no, I'm going to go and make something more, a uh, 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 thing I want to take some salad and prepare. Because sometimes we just want to do what is quick. And we don't want to spend no time thinking, we just want a quick fix. And sometimes the quick fix is not good for us. And so what I'm trying to say is that if our eyes is going to be the problem where we're seeing certain things which cause us to think and then desire, then we have to make sure we avoid those places where we know we're going to see and desire certain things. Yes. A lot of people said to me, when I said to them, I have been married 37 years, and they were cheating, you know what they said to me? That's not natural. Hey. <laughs> That's what they said to me. They said, That's not natural. How can that be? But I said, I have certain principles. And I got some people criticize me. I said, I tell certain lady, if you want to lift in my car, you can't be coming and sitting in the front seat with some mini skirt. 
I have certain principles because I'm not going to be tempted. And so what I'm trying to say, you have to put certain things in place. You have to know how to conduct yourself. Otherwise, the devil will tempt you. It, it's like, uh, you know, some boxers think, oh, I've got a good chin. Let me tell you something. There's no boxer that have an iron chin. If you keep li leaving your chin out there, somebody's going to knock you out. Yes. And so you have to make sure, one person might not think that maybe they don't punch hard enough, but somebody else who punch hard enough will knock you out. And so if you have certain temptations and okay, that person might not knock you out, but somebody else might knock you out. And so you have to be careful and make sure that you guard your mind. And sometimes your eye gate is a door that opens to your mind, to your thinking. What you see with your eyes opens up that gateway. Sometimes what you hear opens up that gateway. In other words, what I'm trying to say, sometimes what you smell opens up that gateway. You walk past somebody and you smell their perfume and you start looking around. All of a sudden, from the smell in your eyes, they start getting engaged. And so what I'm trying to say, there are a number of gateways that can come into your thinking into your mind and then once it gets into your mind if you don't stop those thoughts you are going to be in trouble your mind is an important thing that you have to keep stay on God when we hear certain things we think about it and then it affects the way that we act. So if I hear certain things, I might become defensive based on what I hear. If I hear certain things, I could become arrogant based on what, on what I hear. If I hear certain things, I can have apathy, which means a lack of emotion. Numbers. You don't concerned about anybody, you don't care about anybody. Mm -hmm. You're emotionless, you can do things to them and you don't feel nothing. Yeah. Again, how I think can cause me to alienate myself from other people. In other words, if somebody's telling you that you have an attitude that is putting people off and in your mind you're thinking that there's nothing wrong with me. You'll continue putting people off and then you, you start, so when you start getting depressed, when everybody withdraw themselves from you, you start saying, well, I don't know why everybody just turned against me. I don't know what thing, when actually it was your arrogant behavior and you couldn't understand and you couldn't, you didn't want to change it because in your mind you're thinking there's nothing wrong with the way I am. Because some people say, oh, I don't care what people say about me. But put it this way, you should care about what people say if it's the truth and, and you're doing something bad. In other words, if I'm running up and down and, and, and cheating you know, everywhere and somebody said to me, you should be treating your wife like that, and I get vexed and so I don't want to listen to what you have to say. Well, guess what? When he gets back to my wife and she walk out and leave me, then I don't have nothing to say. Because you have got the warning and if you try to say, well, I don't care what people say. Well, you should do because they're telling the truth. And so when they're telling lies, you can ignore it. But when they're telling the truth, you need to address it. Again, how you think can cause you to have depression. Did you know that? Yes, yes. Depression is a result of your thinking. If you think things are not going to get better, guess what? You start to slide into depression. That's why the song said, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. How you think can cause you into depression. If you start thinking that things ain't going to get better and your life ain't going to get no better and your life is in a rut, guess what? You'll start to sink into depression. You've got to say to yourself, listen, I might be down, but I'm getting up. I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I'm going to get up. I'm going to stand up. Yeah. If we just start to think to ourselves, things ain't going to get better, you'll be surprised how quickly you, 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 you get into depression and before you know it, you hit rock bottom. Yeah, that's true. How we think can cause us to be irritable. Sometimes we have feelings of insecurity. I was at a birthday party the other day, me and my wife, 
my wife was talking to, to somebody and somebody came over to me and said, oh, aren't you concerned about your wife chatting to so-and-so? <laughs> I said, why would I be? I goes, I was born by myself and I'm not insecure. In other words, I have every faith and trust in my wife. But some people who are insecure, you become irritable, you now start thinking things more than you ought to think, you're overthinking things and all this kind of stuff. And sometimes it's because of your insecurity why you're thinking that. Yes. And so, again, how a man thinketh, so is he. And so, when you are, 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 are insecure, then you can come irritable because as soon as you, you see the person talking, you're watching them and everywhere they go, you're watching them and you become irritable because of what you are thinking because you are insecure. And so we have to be careful about what we think. Because what we think will cause us, sometimes we have anxiety and all kinds of stuff because we're thinking things that haven't even happened. And we don't even know if they're going to happen, but we're just overthinking them. You know how many relationships have broken down because of anxiety and because people are thinking things that are not even there and they accuse one another of stuff that wasn't even there because they're just overthinking everything. Oh, he, he had a phone call and he went into the other room to take the call. <laughs> and so they're overthinking it and overthinking it and say, oh, it must be a thing. And then they're trying to get into your phone and, and, and see because they're just overthinking it. And they'll say, oh, well, because somebody cheated on me, um, so I'm assuming that you're going to cheat on me. So every time your phone rings, they, they would have been over listening to, listen to your conversation. So a man thinketh. So is he. The Bible says that we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We have to keep our mind staying on God. We gotta read his word. When we're feeling down, we gotta read his word to pick us up. Amen. We you know we sing the song, He never brought me this far to leave me. We've always got to be thinking of positive things. And if you don't remember anything else about this message, remember to think positive things. Stop thinking negative. Stop thinking that, oh, things ain't going to work out for me. Stop thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to pay the bills. Stop thinking negative. Because when you think negative, it affects your behavior and it can push you down into depression. It's transform your mind. Don't have a passive mind. A passive mind means it's easy for demonic forces to influence your mind. You need a strong mind. That when certain things come in and try to tell you, you ain't going to amount to nothing and you ain't going to be something, you need to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Say, I will not have that. That is not my portion in life. You need to rebuke them and say, in the name of Jesus, get out of my mind, get out of my thinking. Yes. 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 Amen. You need to have a strong mind. And when the Bible says, if you resist the devil, he will flee. And where does the devil come in? Through your mind. Everything that you do comes through your mind. All your desires, everything comes through your mind. And so you have to resist the devil in your mind. And when you resist the devil in your mind, then God will take care of everything else. I'm closing, but I'm closing on this. In Romans 12, 2, it describes an inward renewal of a mind through which our inner spirit is changed into the likeness of Christ. God said, let us form man in our image. The devil says, I will deform man by sin. The world says, we must conform man in our image. Education says, let us inform man by knowledge. Society says, we reform man by culture. Only Christ says, I will transform man by grace. What does grace mean? It means unmerited favor. It allows us to be able to come into the presence of God and he gives us, even when we are messed up, he still gives us favor. 
because he hasn't counted it against us. You know, sometimes when I was at university and you had a certain period deadline to hand in the work, and sometimes either because we couldn't get the books in the library, we'd go to the teacher and the lecturer and say, could we have another three or four days grace? And sometimes the teacher would grant us that grace period. So he didn't penalize us for it being late because he gave us a grace period. That's what grace does. It says, you know something, I'm not going to punish you like how you deserve. I'm going to give you that extra time to make things right. As long as we are on this earth, we have a certain grace period that we can right our wrongs. But guess what? When our eyes close, the grace period is over. No priest can pray you or forgive your sin once you are in the grave. And so we have a chance now that by grace we can be saved. In other words, we need to come to God and admit that we are wrong. And sometimes the problem is we can't admit that we are wrong. We live in a society where they're telling you that wrong is right. There was two people in the Bible and notice how God dealt with them differently. They both sinned, but one acknowledges sin and one did not. One repented and one did not. When David saw Uriah's wife again, uh, he saw from his eyes and he began to think about it until he got himself into trouble. But guess what? When his sin was brought before him, he said, I have sinned against God. And he said, wash me with thyself that I might be whiter than snow. He had another incident where Saul, he was king. And God told him to utterly destroy the Amalekites. And he did not do that. He was disobedient. And when and the prophet came to him and said, have you done what God said? He said, yes, I have. Bear faith said, yes, I have. And even when the prophet pointed out and said, what's the meaning of the bleating of the sheep? He turned and said, oh, we saved that for sacrifice. Not once did he acknowledge that he was disobedient. Not once did he acknowledge that he, uh, 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 he had done wrong in the eyes of God. And God said, because of that, I can't deal with your soul because you call wrong right. This is what I'm trying to say. When we, are, when we do things wrong, we have to say, you know something, yes, I have a demon that needs to be solved. We can't turn and say there's nothing wrong with it. We have it in society now where they're pushing all these various different things and, and tell you that if you're a Christian, you can't say that homosexual is a sin and all this kind of stuff. That is of the devil. God will leave us up to our retrobate mind. If you can't live up to standard, just say I can't live up to the standard, pray for me. But don't call wrong right. If I don't commit adultery, I can't turn and say it's right. And so, oh don't tell me, you can't tell me that it's a sin. It's a sin. And so therefore we need to call and ask for repentance. We can't call wrong right. Because when we call wrong right, God rejects us. The Bible said he rejected Saul. But he did not reject David. He, what did he say about David? He said, he's a man after my own heart. Why? Because David could acknowledge when he sinned. He held up his hands and said, I have sinned. That's what God wants us to do. When we have done something wrong, we acknowledge it and we hold up our hands and say, I have sinned. Not just say, oh, what I did was right. God wants us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can tell people they don't need to mutilate their body and have the doctors change this and change that. All you need to do is have your mind renewed. And when your mind is renewed, you are a different person. Let us stand to our feet. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray because the Bible says that we shouldn't be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And the world would like you to think that what you need to do is change your body and change this or that's the way you was made. No, that's not the way you're made. Everything is in your mind. Everything in your mind. Without your mind, your body is just a dead thing. In other words, without the breath of God in your mind, you're not nobody. Your mind is your unique identifier. In other words, you know that they have certain things and they say the unique identifier or you might have a serial number who identifies with you. Your mind is what identifies what you are. And so if anything needs to be changed, it's your mind that needs to be changed because your mind is who you are. Yes. When people are, are getting together, uh, they might look at each other from the outer appearance and say, oh yes, I'm attracted to you and I'm attracted to this one and I'm attracted to that one. But guess what? At the end of the day, it's your mind on the way, which affects the way you behave. And if you behave in a certain way, then the relationship's not going to work. And it's all in the mind. 
In other words, many people have come together, but they say, you know, our minds are different. We're different states from different tracks. We don't have the same values. All of that is in your mind. And so the key battleground is all takes place in your mind. If you can win the battle in your mind, you will have the victory. And so we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God will renew our minds. Because when our mind is renewed, we shall have victory. the victory. We might, the devil might knock us down today, but guess what? We shall have the victory. Because in our mind, we'll say, listen, devil, you might knock me down, but I'm getting back up. I'm coming for you. I'm going to defeat you. Because your mind says, I know that the, 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 the greatest he that is in me than he that is in the world. And when you know that you who you got on your side, sometimes there's an army that God has to fight for you. And the devil telling you, look at you, you're all on your own. How are you going to beat me? But God has a big army ready to yes, fight for yes, you. Yes, and if you right. can just tell your mind that yes. regardless of my problem, God is bigger than the problem. Amen. And so as long as I am convinced that God is bigger than the problem, he's going to give me the victory. And you'll be surprised how you just skip and you dance because of your mindset that you believe that you will overcome someday let us pray let us pray Lord, father in the name of jesus we come before you to give you the glory and to give you the praise i pray in the name of jesus god that our minds will be renewed lord every problem that we have stems from the mind and so i pray god in the name of jesus i pray god that will keep our minds staying on you Amen. Lord, sometimes our mind is staying in all kinds of stuff. And because of that, it causes us to go into depression. Because we are believing all kinds of things from what we see on the TV, from what we hear people say. But we need to hear your word and hear what you say. And when we hear your word and hear what you say, then our minds will be guarded. And they will know that we can overcome regardless of what, whether we see or we don't see it. Lord, we pray, God, for this very assembly that we will not be discouraged by the numbers, but our mind will be stayed on you to say, we're going to give you the glory and that in your time, our change will come. Amen. God, I pray for the building, Lord. So many people have got their building and we're still in the same place, but we still believe, we still believe that you are going to make the way. We, you are going to make the way. And in your time, our change, our change will come. And so we're not going to think negative and we're not going to go around and say, oh, look from when we're talking about it and it hasn't happened. Because we're going to have in our mind that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. We might not see it now, but it's going to happen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you the praise and we thank you in advance. And we thank you in advance. And we thank you in advance. And we lift up your name. And we glorify you because of your word of the praise. And your word of all glory. And your word of all honor. Thank you. Lord. I pray God help us not yes, to call Lord. wrong right. Yes, Lord. Help us to realize when we have done wrong yes, to say Lord. sorry. Amen. Lord, because if we call wrong right, you'll reject us. But Lord, if we uh, acknowledge our sins, uh, God, then you're more than able to forgive us. Yes, and you're not like man who hold it against us. Amen. We're not like man who says, I will never trust you again. We know that when we say sorry and we genuinely say sorry, you forgive us and you wipe the slate clean. And so I pray, God, if we have fallen short of your glory, Lord, forgive us. Wash us again. The someone said, wash me over again in your precious blood. Wash me over again. Lord, we don't want to be like a soul. We want to be like a David. Oh God, who acknowledges sin and said, Lord, forgive me. Wash me that I may be whiter than snow. We thank you today, Lord, and for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. I pray, God, that you'll speak to their hearts. That they'll realize there's no way that we can find happiness and peace and joy without knowing you. Because everything else outside of you is vanity. Is vanity. Vanity is something that glistens today and shines, but it doesn't last. Many things in the world is enticing and tempting, and it gives you the, the quick feel-good factor. 
but it doesn't last and we suffer in the long term so I pray God that we will not go for quick fixes but we'll go for a solution that can give us joy that's everlasting as we tell you thanks in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. Thank you Jesus well, This time we'll take the ties off and this is the come back For the Christian Jubilee, write my name on the roll. I'll be changed when the Lord will live for me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. We're not just only saying that the words, we want to really be ready. So as each and every one of us may work out our salvation and parenting because we can see the times of the, the what's happening now, we can see that we are actually living in the last days and we want to be ready when Jesus comes. That is my prayer. Hallelujah. Sign me up. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the road. I've been changed. i changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Sign me up.
Hallelujah. 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 Let us all be ready, saints of God. We don't want to be getting ready. We want to be ready. Hallelujah. Just going to bless the tithes and the offering. Father, we just want to thank you. We want to bless your name, Lord. We want to sanctify, Lord. We just want to give you all the glory, God, that is due unto your name. Father, we thank you for just not treating us as we deserve, for remember us, for never leaving us, nor forsaking us, oh God, Father. And for everyone who in your house today, we pray, oh God, that we have received a blessing from you, oh God, because you said, oh God, whether to two or the three are gathering in your midst, you're in the midst to bless. Whether we call in upon your name, Lord, as we come today, oh God, Lord, we just want to thank you, oh God, for your grace and mercy. And Father, for everyone that you have provided a job, Lord, we thank you that we can bring a portion back into your house, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And as the tithes and the offering is before you, O oh God, we pray that you will multiply it, O oh God, that it goes to extension here on earth as we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, give us the closing of benediction.